Welcome to the Men Unplugged Show. Get ready to plug in and recharge your life, family, and career while igniting your faith in Christ. Now, here's your host and champion of helping men live with passion and purpose, Jeff Jarena. Hey, how's it going? Jeff Jarena here, and welcome to episode 21 of Men Unplugged, where I interview inspiring Christian leaders every single day of the week to help you plug in and recharge your life. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial right now at audibletrial.com forward slash men unplugged. Now, let's meet today's featured guest. He was a former U.S. diplomat to Bermuda who served under former presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. He was a Fulbright scholar to Asia and to this day a venture capitalist and philanthropist. Joining me now, author of the international best selling book, Be a Better Dad Today. The Honorable Gregory W. Slayton. Brother Greg, welcome to the show. Are you ready to help men plug in and recharge? Jeff, it's great to be here, and I certainly am. As a former diplomat, my first question for you is, how did you get that sweet gig in Bermuda? (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, President Bush uh, is a wonderful, wonderful man and became a close friend. I had the honor of being the chairman of Silicon Valley Bush 2000 and then the finance chairman for a Bush Cheney 204 for Northern California. So we got to know each other pretty well. And he uh, asked me if I was interested in serving our nation abroad. I said, absolutely. Uh, I talk, We talked about a few different posts, and Bermuda is the one that uh, we ended up, uh, you know, we ended up at. We're deeply, deeply thankful. Hard to turn that one down, really. <laughs> Indeed. It so, was, yes, sir. All joking aside, thank you so much for your service to our country. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Jeff. Two of our four children are in the U.S. Army, and that's real service. Yes, being a diplomat is absolutely service, and it was an absolute honor. Uh, but uh, my heart and my deepest thanks go out to our uh, the men and women in the U.S. Armed Forces. Well, thank you for their service, too. So in terms of your book, Be a Better Dad Today, what inspired you to write it? Well, uh, it really comes from, in, in large part from my own personal experience. When I was uh, young, in my teens, uh, my, my blood father abandoned my brothers and myself. And he didn't just leave mm. us, he wrote a note. And the note said, boys, I'm leaving. I mm. never want to see you again. I never want to see you again. I never want to have anything to do with you again for the rest of my life. And that's one promise he kept. We never heard from him. And 25 years later, he died alone in great poverty and pain. And that was a very, very sad chapter in all of our lives. That's really a tough road to handle when you're a young man. And then really to overcome that, to create this book, Be a Better Dad Today. Well, you'd be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't be surprised, how many people today grow up with really difficult or non-existent relationships with their father. And uh, fatherhood failure is the primary reason for family breakdown not just in America, but but around the world. And that's why our foundation, which is called the Fellowship of Fathers Foundation, helps dads to strengthen their marriages, strengthen their families. And that was the whole purpose of the book. Uh, I want to thank God for his help in understanding how to be a better dad over these past 25 or 30 years. And I really got to thank my Chinese family as well, because uh, I was kind of taken in, quasi-adopted by a Chinese family in my town that happened to have a son my age. And they really taught me the powerhood of fatherhood, family, and faith. And I'll always be indebted to them. In your book, you mentioned that being a dad is the most important job a man will ever have. Can you explain for our listeners why you think that is? Well, it's absolutely true from, from any perspective. First of all, it's the only job that's eternal. Right. Mm-hmm. I was I've been a U.S. ambassador. I've been an Ivy League professor. I've done some other great, uh, great things. But, you know, all those jobs come to an end. And uh, it's also the only job for which there is an eternal reward. Literally, your children, you don't just as a dad, you don't just impact your children and your children and your children's children's children. The research shows that your impact can go down five, six, seven generations. And in fact, if you believe, as we do, Jeff, in eternity and in heaven, that literally your reward can be for eternity. And that's pretty darn important. Mm. 
Now, to your point there, I, I love what you said here. To your point, a stat that you've placed in your book, children who, who grow up without fathers are two to three times more likely to spend time in jail, drop out of school, become addicted to drugs or alcohol, and fail to hold down a long-term job. Man, that is a staggering statistic right there. Well, in point of fact, it's actually worse than that. If you go on, for instance, uh, children who grow up without uh, an actively involved father are something, girls are something like five times more likely to get pregnant uh, in their teenage years out of wedlock. I mean, it just goes suffering from emotional, uh, severe emotional uh, disturbance. That's something that we see more and more in, in the United States. And of course, there's a variety of reasons, a lot more drugs, a lot more alcohol, a lot more pornography addictions and stuff. But one of the prime drivers of uh, severe emotional illness amongst our teens and young adults is, again, uh, a complete lack of any relationship with, with their father. And that's uh, that almost any problem that you can point to in the uh, American teens and adults is is related in some in, in some way to fatherhood failure. With that said about fatherhood failure, for the dads listening right now that you know we're doing the best we can, believers in Jesus Christ, and really you know we don't always get it right all the time. What would you say to those guys or insight that you can that you can give that you know when, when we get it wrong? What well, would you say for some you know encouraging words? Yeah, yeah, let me let me define fatherhood failure cuz I don't want anybody out there who's still trying who's still in the game, who's still at the plate. I don't want anybody out there to think they're failures. The guys, we define fatherhood failure as the emotional or physical absence of a dad from his child's life. That's pretty pre pretty stark. And there's a tremendous amount of that in, in the United States. But my guess is that 90 to 95% of the guys listening to this podcast are not in that category. And I want to encourage every dad. We all make mistakes. Man, I've made so many. And that's why I wrote this book, Be a Better Dad Today, because golly, when I first had our first child, and then we had we've had four, we have four wonderful kids, I looked around for kind of a practical, hands-on, like manual, like, you know, how to do this fatherhood thing. And I didn't find one. So I took a lot of notes. I studied fatherhood on five different continents. I've always been a real student of fatherhood. And those notes over years became this book, Be a Better Dad Today, which now has become a global bestseller. It's in 20 languages and it's sold uh, like something like 300,000 copies worldwide. We do give all the royalties and profits from the book to charity. So uh, I hope, uh, you know, I hope it's a blessing. I hope it continues to be a blessing uh, for dads for many, many years to come. That's great. What that tells me right there, Brother Greg, is that you're speaking to the heart of not just men in America, but men across the globe. Yeah. I mean, if that wasn't the case, you wouldn't be an international bestseller. So great work on the book. And I'll tell you, I've read the book. One of the things that I like that you have from there is creating a noble family vision. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit, an excerpt from maybe your own noble family vision. Sure. Well, actually, our noble family vision is recreated verbatim in the book. And anybody who gets a book can read it. But I want to caution readers, it's not about my family vision or your family vision, Jeff. Each one of us can create and should create our own family vision because every family is unique. And every family has different challenges, different goals, different aspirations. The beauty of a family vision, and all of us guys know this, nothing good is built by accident. You didn't build your house. You didn't build your business. You didn't build your family. Uh, and you sure didn't even a bicycle. You can't build by accident, right? You need a plan. And a noble family vision is effectively a plan, a, a roadmap, if you would, of where do you and your family want to be in 20 or 30 or 40 years, depending on how old y'all, how old you and your spouse are, and you know where you are in your marriage and your family right now. But it's kind of looking forward and saying, here's where we want to be. How are we going to get there? And it's something that's done collectively. I want to urge that. There's an entire chapter on the book, in the book, on how to build a noble family vision. And I just want to say it's not the noble dad's vision. It's not the noble mom's vision. It's the family vision. It has to incorporate the dad and the mom and the kids. You bring everybody together and make sure they all agree and understand that this is important. And this is something we have to, uh, you know, really pay attention to. So uh, it's something that, 
uh, I, I love doing. And it's one of the parts of the book that almost all the reviewers and we've been, you know, re- the book's been reviewed hundreds and hundreds of times have pointed out as something really novel, really fresh and really new. So again, I just hope it's a blessing to, to the guys who read the book. Well, I tell you, just reading your noble family vision, uh, and this one I think is really important. When tough times come, as they will, we will stick together and fight it out. And then you put together. I think that's mm-hmm. really important. Let me just say, Jeff, to all your guys, I just want to say a thank you so much for mentioning that. To all your guys, I just want every dad to hear me. Trouble comes to all families. You know, it's not that, well, never, it's impossible to avoid trouble in the world we live in. Look at the Bible. There's not one person in the Bible, including Jesus, that doesn't have really difficult times. Absolutely. In, in a family, you're either just getting out of trouble, you're having some trouble, or you're going to have some trouble in the future. That's just reality. But the point is, together, as you said, together, a family can weather the storms of life. It's a little bit goes back to Jesus teaching about, do we build our house, literally our house, on the rock, the metaphorical rock, or do we build it on the sand? And a noble family vision and the 10 tools that, that we talk about in the book really help us as dads to build on the rock. So that when those troubles come, which they will, the house stands. Mm, Now you're going right into my next question. And that's the real meat of the book, the 10 tools of fatherhood. Of those, what would you say the most important one is and why? Well, I can't really say that one is more important than the other, but I will say that for each dad, there are tools that we're strong in and tools that we're not strong in. And, and, and I really encourage dads when they pick up the book to just look at the tool section and maybe they talk to their wives or maybe they just think about it themselves and say, boy, that is something I really need help in. Tool number four, heartfelt love, right? Or tool number two, all in marriage. Or tool number one, family first, family fun. The tools are arranged in the acronym fatherhood. So they're easy to remember. And every chapter, there's one chapter per tool, and every chapter is followed by a put it to work section so that guys can actually say, okay, I'm going to read that chapter. I'm going to understand all about it. And then for the next month, I'm going to practice putting it to work in my marriage and in my family. Again, can't build anything in life without tools. Can't build a bicycle. Can't build anything in life without tools. And these are the tools that I've seen around the world on five different continents good fathers using to strengthen their marriages and strengthen their families. Great word. Great word. Okay. So one of the tools, the first one, the family first fun tool, I like that you roll out a 30 day family fun challenge. And I want to roll that out here on the men unplug show guys. I want to say right now, let's get into this. If you want to get into this 30 day challenge, it's really simple. Just read the book. It's, it's really not hard at all. I think one of the things that you say is look, just go to two dates a month with your wife. But the most important thing I think that you wrote in there was don't just do it for 30 days, but try to make this a lifestyle of 60 days, 90 days. And then the next thing you know, you're rolling into doing it month after month after month. That's right, brother. It's good. It's about good habits. You know, tools are only effective when we pick them up, pick them up and use them, right? We've all got, a ba- you know, saws and hammers and uh, screwdrivers and stuff, but they're not helpful if we don't use them. That's the same idea for the 10 tools of fatherhood. Each one of these, we have to pick it up. We have to become masters of of that particular tool. And it's not hard. It's not hard. It's just something uh, that, you know, we can encourage ourselves. We can encourage each other. Let me, let me mention that there is a great website guys can go to for be a better dad today. And they can check out a lot of information right there. You don't even have to buy the book. Of course, if you want to buy it, that's great. All profits go to charity. So, Hopefully it'll be a double blessing both uh, for you and your family and also for the charity that benefits from your purchase. But uh, again, be a better dad today.com and the books available at all Christian online bookstores and Amazon. And, and, you know, I do hope people grab it because uh, you know, we just want it to be a blessing. That's all. Well, we're going to put a link to that book on the show notes of this podcast episode. How would you like to hear about upcoming podcasts and resources each week? Go to menunplugged.net and click on any button that says stay informed to join our weekly email list. And hey, if you're a dad and you want to get a copy of Greg's book today, I've got a free offer for you. 
Go to audibletrial.com forward slash men unplugged to get a free audio download of the book today and a one month trial membership. If you prefer the print version, visit the show notes of this episode on our website at menunplugged.net forward slash podcast to order the book directly. Let's get back to the show. Greg, are you ready to rock the supercharge round? Here we go, brother. All right, let's go. Okay, so my question, the first one is, what were the circumstances that led to your faith in Jesus Christ? It really had to do with uh, my father leaving us and my realization that we had a lot as a family. We, we had some degree of wealth and success and stuff, but we didn't have a family. Once my dad left, it was, mm-hmm. it was nothing. And, and we, we, didn't, we, we weren't a family of faith in any way. And it was very appealing. You know, this Chinese family that I mentioned earlier, they had been, they were immigrants and they didn't have, you know, power or position or wealth or education or anything, but they had faith and they had a strong faith. And as a direct result of that, they had a strong family that really impacted me. And, uh, you know, let me just say, say, you can't, you can argue theology all you want. You can't argue with a strong and happy family. That's a good point. So what was your worst moment as a dad that you care to share? And what do you want men to learn from it? Oh, brother, how much time do we have here? A couple <laughs> hours? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm making mistakes all the time. I'm an emotional guy. I get, you know, pretty fired up and sometimes, you know, in the wrong way. And uh, I definitely need to always control my temper. And always, it's not that I ever, I've never, you know, hit my kids or anything like that, but I have gotten upset. And, and I've got to learn just like all dads need to learn that discipline is for the benefit of the children so that they can learn right and wrong. Uh, and that, that there's a whole chapter in the book on discipline and how to do it correctly. And that's something that, you know, like many, many things, I mean, I'm still learning. So, but our kids, thank God, our kids have turned out extremely well. And my wife gets all the credit for that. But, um, you know, there's honestly, there's a, there, Dad, being a, the reason it's called Be a Better Dad Today is fatherhood is a lifetime journey. And every single day, we can be learning something. We make a mistake. Sure, that's okay. We pick ourselves up. We apologize if we need to. And we keep moving as the heads and the leaders of our servant leaders of our family. Uh, personally speaking, I can't tell you how many times I just get it wrong. After about 30 minutes, an hour, I just feel the Lord saying, dude, you just didn't get it right. And then I go to my daughter and I say, Kinley, I'm sorry. Daddy didn't act the right way. What amazes me is that kids, when you can say you're sorry, they have an unlimited amount of grace to give you. That's absolutely right, brother. Well, hey, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes, you know, multiple times a day. And, but you got to remember what the Bible teaches us, love covers a multitude of mistakes. Actually, it says love covers a multitude of sins, which is also true. So we got the number one thing we got to make sure our kids know is that we love them. In fact, I want to challenge each guy that's listening to us today to, to this, you know, within the next 24 hours to go to each one of your ch- children, even if maybe they're away at college or something or living somewhere else, get them on the phone and tell them three things. I love you very much. I'm proud of you. I really am. I'm proud of the man. I'm proud of the woman that God's making you. And number three, no matter what happens, son, no matter what happens, daughter, I want to be sure you know this, that I'm with you and I'm for you for the rest of our lives. Those are three things that our kids need to hear all the time from us. And if, you don't, if, you're, not a, if you're not a physically affectionate dad, get over it. Get over it. This whole John Wayne thing, it's crap. You know, John Wayne himself hugged his kids. You know? He had to, so, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You want, hey, here's the question. Do you want your 13-year-old daughter going out to find physical affection outside the home? You do not. Right? So let's give our kids the physical affection in an appropriate way, of course, a little hug, little, you know, tap, shaking hands, whatever it is. Give our kids the physical affection they need and the verbal affirmation they need. That's important. We talk about the 10 to 1 rule in the book, 10 times the verbal support and affirmation and attaboys for every one time discipline. 
hey, discipline's critical. If you love your kids, you got to discipline them. But discipline must be set in the context of love. That's critical. Ten to one rule. Another thing we really hammer home in the book, and I hope uh, I hope that's you know helpful for your listeners. That's great. I'll tell you what, the answer right there when you said, do you want your daughter at 13 years old to get affection from yeah. somebody else? My answer would be, I don't want my daughter at any age to get that from anybody else. But obviously there's a point when they get older and they get married. I, I get all that, but okay. Of so, course, of course, of course. <laughs> so what is a blind spot or Achilles heel that you have that has a tendency to hold you back? Well, we all have them. And the key thing is to get out of the blind spot. It's one of the places where your wife can be super helpful. You know, you're, if, if, if you allow her to speak into your life and your older kids, you know, my kids now 26, 24, 22 and 17. And sometimes they'll have really insightful things to say about me or about the family. And, you know, I got to pay attention. I got to take that stuff seriously, not just blow them off and say, well, you know, OK, you know, make some excuse for myself. But say, you know, something that is exactly right. What my daughter said or what my son said. And I really got to pay attention to that. Uh, for me personally, I want to encourage, you know, every guy in this 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 call to be spending time with our own Heavenly Father. There's no substitute for that. We must be the spiritual leaders in our homes. And I don't mean ordering people around and saying, do this, do that. I mean being a servant leader like Jesus was for us and is for us. You know, the Bible, He did. I love the Bible, nets it right out. Husbands, Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And man, it's no higher calling. And then, but to your point, of course, it says, wives, respect your husbands, right? And that's important. If any wives are listening, man, your husband needs your respect. And that's just critical. So anyway, I'll leave it at that, brother. But spending time with your husband, wife, man, woman, even single, whatever, Spending time every day in the Word with Papa, our Heavenly Father. Nothing more important than that. Mm. Outside of the Bible and outside of your book, Be a Better Dad Today, what's another book that you'd recommend to the men and why? Oh, boy. that's There are lots and lots of great books. I love reading biographies of the great saints, whether it's Hudson Taylor in China or Billy Graham, who's in his hundredth year now, I, those are very encouraging. And I, I can learn from the men who, and women who have gone before us. Um, I particularly appreciate Tim Keller's uh, writings, you know, Pastor Tim Keller out of New York City, Redeemer mm-hmm. Presbyterian Church. He's got some great, great books for marriage, for uh, all, all kinds of things. I, I appreciate his books very much. But I just want to say again, I, 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 I'm going to repeat myself, Jeff, but the Bible is a, is, uh, and I grew up not reading the Bible. I grew up in a non-Christian family. Absolutely. Didn't have a Bible, never read a Bible until my Chinese family gave me one uh, in my mid-teens. The Bible is a powerful, powerful book. If we open it up and we read it with humility and with openness and with transparency, it over time, you know, we memorize, memorize it, help it, to let it change us. It will for the good. Absolutely. It's the most important work out there. I mean, it is God's word and it never sure. comes back void. So brother, yeah. brother Greg, I feel led to do this. Would you mind leading us in a prayer? I was hoping you would ask that, Jeff. I was hoping you'd ask that. I would love to do that. And, uh, you know, please guys pick up a copy of the book, be a better dad today. My email and contact information's in there. I'd love to be in touch with folks. Jeff has been a great blessing being with you today. I really thank you for this great podcast and Men Unplugged. And, and let's pray right now. Brothers, let's just pray together Absolutely. For, you know, for our Father's work in our lives, in our families' lives, and in our nation, in our world. So gracious Heavenly Father, Tian Fu Sisini, Lord, we thank you and we bless you and we praise your holy name. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you call yourself our Heavenly Father, that you sent Jesus in part to teach us that you are our Heavenly Father. In fact, Jesus taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. For that's so powerful, and that's such an affirmation of the role of fatherhood and the importance of fatherhood. Lord Jesus, I ask that by your Holy Spirit that you would send, uh, that your Spirit would minister 
to each one of the men and women listening to this podcast. They would minister their fears or hurts or resentments or, 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 or concerns. We all have them, Lord. We all have them. I pray that we would each be able to bring them to your feet, to lay them down in front of you, and to ask for your power and your wisdom and your love and your strength and your joy for our family today. Lord, every single day we have a chance to be a better dad and be a better mom. And I just pray that every guy here would commit themselves to being a better dad today, tomorrow, and every day for the rest of their lives. So that's going to impact not just our children and our family today. That's going to impact their children and their children and their children and their children's children's children. And we know that from research. That's not just me making it up. We know that from the research, Lord. So we thank you that you promise to answer our prayers. You promise to be with us as we pray. You promise to help us to be the very best moms and dads that we can be. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great example of servant leadership in this world. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us and for us and for our families and for our children. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are the namesake and you are the head of every family in this world. And we just thank you and bless you. And in your most holy name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen and amen. Powerful prayer. Mr. Slayton, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was truly an honor and a pleasure. And I'm telling you, you rock the mic today. Great job. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much again for my copy of the book. Thanks again for being on the show. God bless you now. All right, that wraps up today's show. Thanks again to my guest, the Honorable Gregory W. Slayton. Keep plugged in and charging forward as we have some key links along with those resources on our website and a link to Brother Greg's book that you can get, Be a Better Dad Today. Just type Gregory in the search bar and everything we spoke about will be there. Until next time, stay plugged in and recharged. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There's plenty more to see at menunplugged.net, including key resources and ways to engage with Jeff in his training and speaking forums. While there, don't forget to subscribe and receive a free gift. We look forward to you joining us next time here on the Men Unplugged Show. Men Unplugged.